Hey everybody, in this tutorial we are going to learn how to use an RGB LED that is an LED that can emit many different colors and we will also learn about analog writing with our Arduino and pulse width modulation. So let's get into the wiring right away here and I have an RGB LED right here. And what the RGB LED is, it's basically just three LEDs combined into one. It's a red LED, a green LED, and a blue LED, hence the R, G, and B. And these go into the LED, and if this is outputted, then you will get that LED to light up. In this case, it would be red. So you have the three antos, uh, the three plus sides, and then you have one cathode, which should go back in the ground. And you can tell which one the cathode is by looking for the longest of the leads, and that should tell you which one it is, or it is the second one from the flat side, or just play around with it and see which one works. And that should give you that, and once you find that, you just wanna set it up just like this. Now, there's an important distinction that I'm doing here. And you don't need this strictly to operate the RGB LED, but if you look at how it's pulsing, kind of slowly lighting up and slowly lighting down, that is controlled with PWM or pulse width modulation. And that is only available on some of the pins. So if you look at the label here, it says digital PWM and it has the tilde. So I have connected all of these into the outputs with the tilde. So I did 11, 10, and nine and you wanna make sure that you have these connected to the ones with the tilde if you wanna do it just like I am doing here. So get the, and I have my 330 ohm resistors, so get that set up and let's get the programming. Find this here. And I want to set up uh, those pins just like I did before. So pin, not pin 13, pin 11 is gonna be high. Wait, not high, it's gonna be an output. It will be high eventually. Pin 12 is going to be my output. I am messing these up like there's no tomorrow. Cool. Okay, so how this is basically going to work is if you just turn 11 on high, it will be a, um, it will be a specific color. If you turn 10 on high, it will be a color. And if you turn on blue, it will be a color. And if you combine those, you can get different colors. So what I could do is I could write a uh, digital, write 11 high, wait a bit, then turn it low, then write digital, write 10 high, low. And, but that starts to get a bit tedious. And I wish there was some easier way of just having of uh, just being able to kind of do this very simple logic over and over again and fortunately for us there is and that's what's called a for loop so i'm going to just write this here and then i'll explain the syntax so we have three conditions you're going to get a variable and it's customary to call this i so int i equals zero and then you want a semicolon and then you want what to check to see if it should actually run through the loop and um, for this example here, I will do while I is less, oops, while I is less than four, and then how you want it to iterate. So uh, we're going to write I plus plus, and that means each time I will increase by one. So I'm going to do this here, and should then uh, I'm going to just serial print this. serial.print ln and I'm gonna do I and then I'm gonna delay by one second so what's gonna happen here is this is gonna run through this loop every single time it goes through the void loop so that we have a variable and we um, and we call it I and it's set to zero while I is less than four it is going to run through this loop. And each time it runs through this loop, i is going to increase by one. So you're gonna see it's gonna be i is gonna be zero, then one, then two, then three, and then it's gonna start all over again. So I'm just gonna run this here. 
You gotta make sure you got your semicolons. You gotta make sure you got your semicolons. Alright, and check this. Zero, zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two. And it starts all over again. And these for loops, they are a foundational construct of programming. You will see them in every type of language all over the place. They are very flexible and very useful. So we're going to change this around to actually create something interesting here, which instead of setting i to zero at the beginning, we are going to set it to nine. And then while nine, while it is less than 12, so it gets all the way up to 11, i is going to increase by one. And we are going to do a digital write. And we are going to digital write i high. And then we are going to wait a second. And then we are going to digital write i low. So now if I compile this and upload it, it's going to go blue, green, red, blue, green, red. And it's just going through all those colors over and over again. Now, this is different than the first one that I showed you. And what we are going to do is we like there's these are digital pins. So we can't necessarily write a different analog value into it, whether it be like with this analog read before. Yeah. we could have it read uh, the value of the photoresistor and kind of figure that out. And all right, that's a different voltage of uh, the digital pins can't do that. They could only write one or zero and they can only read one and zero. They're more limited in that respect. But what they can do is they could pulse at a different um, as, um, at a different rate. So if we go here, you can see this is a 50% duty cycle where it's half on, half off, half on, half off. And this one is 75% where it's 75% on, 25% off, 75% on, 25% off. This one's the opposite, 25% on, 75% off. And if you were to do this, this would appear to be weaker than this. So it simulates that analog value, even though it can't actually write it. So it's pretty neat how that works. So I'm going to go back here. And inside of my for loop, I am going to make another for loop. And this time I'm going to, I can't have another variable called I because I already have one inside of here. So I'll call it X. I'm going to have in X equals zero. And then while X, while it is less than 256, when we're going to do an analog write, and this analog write can have a value anywhere between zero and 255. 255 being the strongest, zero being the weakest. We are going to x plus plus. And I am just going to do an analog, right? Just like the analog read, which we did before. And the pin is going to be i, and the value is going to be x. Then I am going to delay, what's a good value? Let's, let's delay 10. So is that a thousandth of a second? No, a hundredth of a second, there we go. All right, so it is going to go through each pin, and once it hits a pin, it is going to start at zero, and it is going to iterate through all of these values. And it's going to go, so it's going to write it to one, then two, then three, then four, then five, then six, then seven, then eight, then nine, and so on, up until 255. Then it will go to the next one. Now, we kind of have a problem here. And that's that it is going to be set at 255, and then it's going to stay at 255. It's not going to do anything else. So for now, what we'll do is we will just write that pin down to zero again. Digital right I, and we'll just turn it off. We're going to change this in a sec. But let me upload this. You see, it goes up there to blue, and then green fades up, red fades up, and so on. R, G, and B. Cool. Now, 
this is a little different than what I had before, and I don't want it just to go automatically back down. I basically want to do this for loop, but I want to do it in reverse. So I'm going to make another for loop, and we could do int x again because this, so variables, they, variables will only, if you were to declare these variables up here, so if you were to have like int x and int y um, and like int i, those would cover the entire program. And if we were to do it outside of here, int x equals something, it would cover all of these. But as you kind of get further into the uh, curly braces, then they don't cover as much. So this in this for loop, this only this int x is only for this for loop. This int i is only for this for loop. The i is still going inside of this for loop, so we could not write another i here, but uh, we could do another x because after this for loop ends, this x ends, and after this for loop ends, this i ends. So we're gonna do another integer, and this time instead of zero, it's gonna be 255. And now we're gonna, just the opposite here, while x is greater than zero, instead of x plus plus, we want x minus minus. And this could be anything. It could be, you know, you want to x plus five or whatever you want it to do, you could do. This is just shorthand for x equals x plus one. Why do I have a parenthesis down there? It doesn't look great. Mm -mm. All right, that should be good. So where am I here? All right, we are going to just do the same exact thing. Analog, right? I x and then delay. I kind of want a little faster one, so let's do five. And what I'm missing, this is semicolon again. It's no good. You see it fades up and fades down, fades up, then fade down, fade up, fade down. And that is what we have with these for loops and this RGB LED and the analog, right? You could use these tools to come up with any kind of combination that you want, but that's, I'm gonna leave you off from here and uh, you should do a lot of experimenting, see what you could do. And I uh, hope that was helpful. So have a good one, later.